Good evening and welcome to One Minute Architecture. Tonight we are going to look at some of our favorite architects and do a little bit of psychoanalysis to understand the whys behind the who. Disclaimer, don't take this too seriously. I'm an architect and although I took a few psychology classes at university, our teacher was a psychotic creep. See another video I made about him in this description below. This episode is called The Dog and the Architect. So, let our first patient, Charles Edouard Jeanneret, lay down on his machine for resting, the LC4, his own psychoanalytical couch, and let's start this session. Here we have Pinceau, meaning paintbrush in French. He's Le Corbusier's schnauzer. When Pinceau died, Le Corbusier had it skinned and used the fur as the binding for a copy of one of his favorite books, Don Quixote de la Mancha. Now, this is a significant fact. As we all know, the story of Don Quixote is that of a mad, old, idealistic nobleman and his faithful squire, Sancho Panza. A few things can be said about skinning a dog and using his skin as the cover for a book. Like Don Quixote, Le Corbusier was a fighter and a magnificent orator who saw himself as the visionary savior of humankind. It is through his architectural and urban schemes that he will lead us into a new, efficient, perfect world. The old Paris, for example, has to go, make way for clean lines, air and green open spaces, away with history and its filthy clutter. And like Don Quixote, he is delusional. He ruined the finances of his parents when he convinces them to have him design them a home. The pompous La Maison Blanche is built in 1912. He assures them that he's generous in his design fee, which is only 6% instead of the standard 10%. In 1919, the Generes have to sell the house at the loss. They just can't afford it. A sense of guilt will remain at core for the rest of his life. Even after he has built his parents yet another house on Lake Geneva, where his mother will live until she dies at the age of 99. The regret and remorse that he feels underlies each and every letter he sends home. Home to his mother, whom he desperately needs to acknowledge him. But Albert, his younger violin-playing brother, remains her favorite. To the world-famous architect, she complains about the leaking roof of that petit maison that he built for her. Thank you and good night. See you next time.